Good evening, everyone. My name is Genevieve, and I'd like to invite you on a short journey. 200 years ago, for teaching and learning to happen, this involved people writing on pieces of paper, putting it on ships, and distributing it around the globe. 50 years ago, when my parents were going to school, this involved them walking distances to the nearest education centers, and thereby copying whatever was put on a blackboard uh, onto the sand or into a book, if they were lucky, and qu quickly committing it to memory before the elements wiped it away. When I was going to school, I had a bit more luck. I had access to libraries, I had access to computers, I had access to um, all of the latest information that I needed at the time. Today, for one to gain access to education, it's pretty simple. Someone simply needs to upload information onto a computer somewhere, uh, which is stored in the cloud, and another needs to download the information. This is a statement that I cannot make in a low and middle income community because their way of teaching and learning remains the same as the way it was when my parents were in school 50 years ago. At Chalkboard Education, we look forward to bridging the skills gap in Africa by, training, by developing the tools that will be used to train 250 million youth by 2050. By we, I mean my team of skilled experts in software development, change management, and project management, as well as our partners who are educational institutions, as well as NGOs, and our, and, and, and our clients who are teacher training colleges, and we work together to make sure that we're distributing content to our users. What we've done is we've sat down together with all these uh, partners, and we've looked at the problem that is facing education in Africa. It is grouped into three categories. Access to education. This means that people are not able to access education either because of financial reasons or social reasons, as well as physical reasons, meaning that the classrooms are not big enough to take everybody who's ready to go to school. When it comes to the quality of education, we look at the kind of teacher training that the, that the teachers on the continent are receiving. We realize that they have not really received training after graduation, and they keep training the students on what they were taught 10, 15, 20 years ago. We look at the relevance of the content that the students are receiving. This is not preparing them for the future that they're going into. They're learning things that we learned when I was in school. They're learning things that my parents learned when they were in school. This is doing a great disservice to Africa, and it's not fair. At Chalkboard Education, we're working in a 1.84 billion million industry when it comes to edtech in Africa. Edtech in Africa is also really picking up. We're looking at 14% growth in the last two years. However, 45% of, of the companies are located in South Africa, Kenya, and Nigeria. We're looking forward to expanding and operating in other markets. We have developed an application that allows you to distribute your content, be it audio, video, text, image, quizzes, or surveys, and you can do this even offline. Our application also allows you to track metrics. You're able to track your users. You're able to rate your teachers. You're able to understand the performance and basically help your educational facilities perform better and align to the quality of education that is needed. Over the years, we've been able to train 9,000 teachers. We've impacted on 1,500 students. We work in four countries, Rwanda, Uganda, Ghana, and Cote d'Ivoire. And we've indirectly impacted on one, one million beneficiaries. Over the years as well, we have managed to grow our revenue streams in double digits, and this is projected, predicted to continue. This is very simple. How we do this is very simple. We have a very easy three-way revenue model that we're working with. So we have software as a service, which requires users to uh, subscribe to our service to gain access to the information, and they pay $1 per month. We also have a revenue sharing agreement, which is partnerships with universities to make sure that they're able to distribute the content beyond their walls and ensure that more people are gaining access to education in Africa. We also have partnerships with NGOs and foundations like MasterCard, and we create content for them and enable them to distribute it geographically wherever they need distributed across the continent. Why we're different is that we have developed offline solutions and are easy, that are easy to use. We also have a team that is locally present and knows the, the ground, which is something that is very important as we heard from our speakers earlier, and we're ready to scale on impact. We're looking to raise $1 million that we will use to optimize our business operations. We're looking to also enhance our application by developing new products. We're also looking to expand our operations to different countries and increase our impact, as well as open our, our application to more and more users across the continent. 
a closer look at our roadmap shows that there are six sectors that you need to focus on when you're looking at edtech in, in Africa, and we are operating in four of them. I invite you to continue the journey with me and help me make sure that no child continues to learn the way we did 50 years ago and, learns the and uses the modern technology of our day. Thank you. Just, just got a quick question for you. Um, you know, one of the most complicated things in, in a value proposition like this, which is so fundamental to transforming the continent, is deciding who your customer is. And you mentioned universities may help you distribute, but you mentioned tackling the youth market. So who is your customer? Because one of the important elements is realizing who's your bottleneck or barrier to actually sell. That's the first question. And the second one is, you know, programs like the Khan Academy and Coursera are going on the freemium model with a different process. What's your thinking between that? Because the dollar does become a barrier towards going that. I'm sure you thought about these questions. All right, thank you for your question. So the first question, um, when we started the business, we were targeting university students and making sure that everybody had access. We realized that university, that high school students were graduating from high school and joining university. However, there was not enough room to take everybody in. So many people were falling out on the highway and basically looking for other ways of um, becoming useful in the economy, which is not really practical when you're in Africa. Then we looked closer at the problem and realized that it's actually more important to focus on the teachers and make sure that they're teaching um, the students a lot of relevant information that they can use to reskill and retool themselves and be more um, engaged in the community uh, that they live in. When it comes to the competition that we have when it comes to the Khan Academy and the likes, uh, what we're doing is we're partnering with uh, companies that are working in Africa and are more versed with the continent, the continent and the content that is needed. So we're not going to copy paste information from different parts of the world. We're going to curate content for Africa and distribute it in Africa so that our users are more uh, aligned to what they need to do uh, today and in the future. 